The phrase remote communication sounds like something that we may have seen on the old Star Trek TV series. But in today's world, with so many people working from home in widely separated places, it is the new normal. For a startup or a growing business, it gives you an opportunity to work with some great people and resources while minimizing overhead expenses. Hi, I'm Nelson Davis, sharing my experiences to help you make it. So, your business is being operated from facilities in your home or a small rented space. But you want to work with the best people you can find without being whipped by major expenses for office space. I think that describes many of us who operate a small business these days. The good news is that current technology can help you do very well without renting thousands of square feet at several dollars per foot per month. Also, you may find that you can hire some of the best people because they won't have to face a grinding commute every day just to get to work on your team. I live in Los Angeles, for instance, and we have the certified worst traffic in the country. And when I tell a job candidate that they can work remotely, their interest level seems to go way up. So to run your business well with a number of remote employees or associates, it's going to take some t adjustments on your part. Let's deal with the behavior part of all this before talking about the tactics and the technology. The first thing you have to get past is the fear that a remote worker won't really be working with the intensity and output level that you want. And if that is really bothering you, it could turn you into a dreaded micromanager who second guesses your remote employees and becomes more of a, a pest instead of being a good boss. And I know you want the good boss part. To avoid heated discussions and too many disappointments as you go forward, take the time to set up procedures that will keep communication alive, even though you won't be sharing donuts and coffee with those people. I suggest that you begin by establishing the schedule for updates, status reports, and face-to-face -face meetings. That matters for everyone in your business, whether they are on-site or remote. Because the remote associates won't be walking down the hall with a problem or for a nice pat on the back, there will be a lot more texts and emails from them. Rather than an abrupt message from you on a Monday, for example, requesting that a piece of work be delivered on Tuesday, you'll benefit from explaining yourself more. More detailed communication. For example, saying, Mary, I need the status report by Tuesday because I want to go over it before my meeting with the entire group on Thursday. That helps the other person understand why you're putting on a bit of pressure, and that makes a person more likely to deliver on time. Since business is always as much about the people as the product, those face-to-face -face meetings have to happen on a regular basis. The body language of a person in the same room will tell you more about them than megabytes of emails. I find it helpful to use visual technology so that I can exchange smiles and laughs with associates. This morning, for example, I had a meeting with Roger, my website person, via Skype video. Worked out very well. I even saw his pet bird while I was doing that. You can get the same results, by the way, on Google Hangout or use FaceTime if you happen to be working in the Apple Orchard on your uh, IT setup. But there are times when it's best to communicate the way that Alexander Graham Bell did in 1876 when he spoke the immortal words, Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. He spoke those words into his invention, the telephone. There's a lot of easy technology that you can use to help all of your employees remain on the same page with your company goals and strategies. A hot one these days is an app called Slack. It lets far-flung teams of people communicate easily. Now, I've heard some people say that Slack simply encourages too many additional messages in their lives, so you'd have a close look at it. So, having virtual employees can bring a fresh breath of business freedom to business owners like yourself, along with employees. But to have it feel like freedom and not a wedge between you, various steps and procedures have to be in place. As we know, communication gets complicated when people work far apart. For your remote employees, you should schedule a weekly 20-minute one-on-one call for updates, progress reports, and offer help if needed. 
Those conversations build the kind of trust and familiarity that develop more naturally between people in the same office. Email or instant messages are fine for sharing information and ideas, but video calls and video conferencing are better for brainstorming or problem solving. If you have some real difficult decisions or have to resolve a conflict, be sure you do that face-to-face. It does take work to keep the remote relationships warm, but it is worth it. I'm Nelson Davis, and I want to help you thrive in this entrepreneurial world. (music) 